we will have the scripture portions read to us by Sankita. Will you please come? And we will read this one. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in the light. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Jonah, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they do not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the stripes of linen lying by themselves. And he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Praise be to God. moment, in case he, I've been telling you maybe for a month that I would visit you on such a day, in a particular day. And then, if I come to your house, if I find the door door and you are not there, I wonder, what would that mean? And I'm sure you would agree with me, it would mean that you didn't take my word seriously, isn't it? But the same thing happened here. I don't know how many of you remember last year, 5.30 service, we meditated on one of the questions that is related to the event of resurrection. Who will roll away the stone for us? Correct? But this morning I want to read or I want to meditate with you about another question that is relating to the event of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here it says, why do you see the living among the dead? You know, why do you see living among the dead? Very quickly, you know, on the first day of the week, you know, Luke chapter 24, we read that verse 1. Very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. And if you read Luke 23, the last verse, 56, it says, Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, because Friday was the day of preparation. And on the day of Sabbath, nothing would be open, so the ladies would not go and buy their spices. So they prepared everything on Friday. And unlike the Egyptians, the Jewish people did not have the custom of embalming their dead bodies. The scripture says, uh, you know, they, the ladies went to anoint the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is an act of devotion. It is an act of love towards the person. So they went to anoint, particularly anointing was done to offset the stench of a decaying body. So, who are these women that are mentioned in Luke chapter 24, verse 10? Dr. Luke records it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Salome Mary, the mother of James, and all the other ladies with them. These are the ladies that went. So, like the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, even these women who were with Jesus Christ for a very long time, and they heard several times that Jesus Christ saying that I would be killed and I would be raised on the third day. But yet none of these ladies went to the tomb expecting to see an open tomb. You know the fact that they took the spices to anoint the body of the Lord Jesus Christ 
you know, it, it, it reminds us or it conveys the idea they never expected that Jesus Christ would resurrect. That is why they went to anoint the dead body as they normally do um, according to the Jewish custom. They did that. And if they had believed in what Jesus Christ had said, you know, they would not have gone to the tomb so early in the morning with spices. But what the scripture says, but they did not find the body. Okay? So at least that time they should have praised the Lord, he is not here, he is risen. None of them said. None of them said. Okay? And even they did not associate the missing body of the Lord Jesus Christ with the glories to the resurrection. They did not. And Luke chapter 24 verse 4, you know, the word of God says two men, that is two angels, you know, mentioned only by Luke here as two of them. Mark says only one. It does not mean to say that there are any contradiction in the account. Probably Mark focused on the one who spoke uh, rather than uh, two of them. So he says, remember, remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. What did he say? What did he tell you? The son of man must be delivered over into the hands of sinner, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. This is what he kept on telling them. But the ladies did not take it seriously. Although the word says after the angel reminded them, they said they remember. But then what happened? You know, men are not better. These men, these women came back and told the eleven and others, the scripture says in verse 11 of, of Luke 24. You know, but they did not believe the women. My dear people of God, ladies, don't be discouraged. It is the age-old problem. It is the age-old problem. And they never listen to the women and face the consequences. Correct? We still do that, isn't it? And not only that, look at the way Dr. Luke records. Because their words seem to them like nonsense. Who are these guys? These are the fellows who were with him for three and a half years. Witnessed everything that he did, all the miracles and wonders. And all the time he was listening to them. And over and over again he told them, look, this is what happened. I would be handed over. I would be killed. But I would rise again. God would raise me. None of them ever took these words seriously. Like you and me. We read. God speaks to us through his word. But what do we do? We will let that happen. None of them, both the women and the men, they did not. My dear people of God, when we fail to remember and believe what God has said in his word, Dr. Luke says, you know how it is looking like? Looking for the living among the dead. Can you imagine going to the graveyard? Checking each tomb if there is anyone alive. It might sound very funny, but that's what you and I do when we fail to remember what God has revealed in His Word. When you and I fail to believe what He has said, what you and I are doing is that we are looking for the living among the dead. How often you and I do that, my dear people of God? It is not that God never ever stopped talking to us. He continues to talk to us. But we don't believe it. We don't take it seriously. The same mistake because we are also the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to follow the legacy. You know, if the legacy is good, we can follow. But this is not very good to follow. Today, if at all you and I are discouraged, if at all there is any reason that you and I are not feeling very edified, that is because we fail to remember and believe what the Lord says. 
Even before he died, he said, I will be with you till the very end of this age. My dear people of God, I'm telling you, if these words are not personal to you, if you and I are not deeply convinced about this glorious truth that yes, he died for me on the cross of Calvary. Yes, he was hanging for more than three hours, excruciatingly going through that grave. I know that he did that for me, but that is not the end. Yes, that was very silent, you know, completely silent that Saturday. You know, devil must have been jumping and saying, look, this man's story is over. All that he said, but look, nothing seems to be happening. God seems to be silent, but that that is not the end of the story. That is not. It is God who has the final word, not the evil one. An empty tomb is there to prove that my Savior lives. Isn't it? Hallelujah. It's a glorious truth. Otherwise, my dear people of God, when you and I fail to remember this is what, imagine us doing this. I just want to place this on me before you looking for the living among the dead. Are we doing the same mistake? Or do we need two angels to come and say, remember, remember what he said? Remember. My dear people of God, the same thing that happened, you know, Luke chapter 24, if you read verse 13 onwards. Two men were going to the village called Emmaus, which is seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were discussing about Jesus Christ. After his resurrection, Jesus Christ joined them and asked them, hey, Look, you seem to be discussing about something about war. He said, Jesus of Nazareth, about this man whom we were hoping that he would reveal his there. Look, now, third day now, nothing seems to be happening. They've given up. We pinned the hope on this man. If we thought he would deliver us. But now he passed away Friday evening. Now, now look now, now Sunday or, or early morning, nothing seems to be happening. I think all that, you know, the, the word of disappointment. We were hoping that he would redeem. How many times you and I tend to give up without realizing God has the final word. Many people of God. And then, what did he rebuke them or ask them? He said, How foolish you are and how slow you are to believe all that prophets had spoken. Are you hearing them telling you the same thing? I hear that. How foolish money you are, how slow you are to believe what I have told you. I told you very clearly. I've been telling you from time and again. But you didn't take my word seriously. I'm with you. It is not your duty to draw conclusions. You are called only to trust me. Drawing conclusion is my prerogative. You do not know what I'm going to do with you. Like these two fellows on the road, they might, you and I might say sometimes, we thought, we hoped he would do that, but nothing seems to be happening. It would happen in God's time. It would happen. Let's not give up because it's very, very important. Because as you and I celebrate this glorious truth of resurrection, my dear people of God, we don't have to wait for the new year to make resolution. Even this morning, you and I can make a resolution that I will not look for the living among the dead. I will believe wholeheartedly what my Savior has said. He's risen. He's with God bless you. We praise Him. We thank you, Lord, for the empty tomb that is still standing. Father God, to prove that whatever you have said will come true. Heaven and earth may pass away, but Father God, every word of yours, yours, Father God, that would be fulfilled. Lord, this morning we cry out to you. We have this habit, O oh Father, looking at our own circumstances, and we believe. Lord, sometimes we give up. 
Sometimes we express our disappointment as these two people, as these two men on the road to Emmaus. Father God, we know that we have a hope that would never disappoint us. Lord, we know that we have a hope that would never put us to shame. Father God, we know that you are in our midst. Lord, you have risen and Lord, you are present with us through your Holy Spirit. And one day you are going to come back and follow. Lord, once again, I come and all the families of peace, your salala, into your hands. Father Lord, together we cry out to you with one accord, with one mind. Give us the grace to believe your word. Father God, blessed is the one who believes your word, O oh Father. Lord, give us the grace to believe your word wholeheartedly and believe that every word of yours will come to fulfillment, O oh Father. Lord, I pray that you would help us not to look for the living among the dead. Father God, help us. Help us and have mercy upon us. Continue to fill us with this glorious hope that you are with us and you will continue to be with us that nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Your word is true. Your word is true. We praise you and we thank you. Lord, once again, I pronounce your, Lord, this power of your resurrection, Lord, to be granted unto each one of us, so that we will continue to know that, and we will continue to live by that power of heart. Thank you, Lord, once again. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, for we ask this prayer of thanksgiving in the precious and worthy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We please Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face towards each one of you and bless you with his joy and peace and also the power of his resurrection both now and forevermore. Amen. He's risen. Yes.